Welcome. Uh, welcome to Hartford. Welcome to your uh, state capital complex. Uh, so I'm Eric Berthel, of course you know that already, uh, and I represent uh, the 68th, which of, 68th House District, which of course is Watertown, Oakville, and part of Woodbury. I serve on three committees in the General Assembly. I serve on education. As most of you know, I was a former, uh, former vice chairman of the Watertown Board of Education. I serve on public health. I've been in a uh, public health uh, hospital and emergency services uh, role all of my career. And I sit on finance. The difference between a state representative and a state senator, the area that I represent better. is, they dress better. He's wearing a suit, I'm not, so. Um, but I'm better looking, so uh, the, uh, the difference is the area that, that I represent is much, much smaller. I represent about 25,000 people. Senator Kane has 10 towns and about 100,000 people, right? About 100,000 um, in his district. So there are 151 state representatives. There are 36 state senators. Okay, so there's 187 of us up here uh, doing, uh, doing the legislative work. Right. So you're in the foyer of the uh, legislative office building. This building was built in 1988. Um, it was designed and purpose built to outlive all of us. Just like the Capitol was built in 1878, this building was not built to be knocked down you know, in 10 years or 15 years. It was built to stand the test of time. And that's why you see that it is full of all of this beautiful stonework and polished marble and everything else. One interesting fact before we show you some of the doors here, the only piece of stone that is actually from a quarry in Connecticut in this entire building Unlike the Capitol, the only piece of stone is that column that is holding that very interesting modern rendition of a uh, U.S. Eagle. Uh, we affectionately refer to that as a chicken. What you see on these doors, in addition to them being very big and very heavy and very tough and strong appearing, they are, okay? They're very heavy, big, tough doors. But you also see that they're adorned with some artwork. Of course, on the top of the door is the great seal of the state of Connecticut, okay, which uh, we're very proud of. It gives me goosebumps to talk about it. It's our state seal. You know, it represents what we are in Connecticut. And does anyone know, do you remember what um, Key Transtulted Sustainet stands for? Yeah, which is transplanted self-sustained. That's correct. That's exactly right. That which is transplanted still sustains. Sure, set of doors is different. The state insect, of course, is the beautiful, scary, kind of odd-looking praying mantis. It is against the law in Connecticut to kill a praying mantis. This is um, Connecticut's Wall of Honor. It was dedicated on November 2nd, 2007, and as the sign says, um, uh, this is a tribute to Connecticut's heroes and the U.S. Armed Forces who gave their lives in Iraq and Afghanistan. A solemn reminder that um, while we're not at, you know, it's not World War II, it's not Korea, it's not Vietnam, but we still have men and women that are dying every day uh, in, the, in the fight of, for freedom. Here she is, the genius of Connecticut. In my opinion, the most beautiful piece of art in the entire building. Right? The genius was originally on top of the dome at the very top of the Capitol building. When the, when the hurricane of 1938 whipped through, it, the winds were so strong that it actually loosened up the original genius. And there was a fear that all seven tons of her would fall and either fall through the dome or fall to the ground and hurt someone on the ground. So she was taken down. Hey, with, with the start of World War II uh, in 1941, she was made out of bronze. Okay? She was donated to the war effort and melted down. Okay? Melted down. There were, uh, there's a group that felt that this was an important piece of Connecticut's history. The original pictures of the Capitol up until 1938 showed the genius on top. So the uh, original plaster mold of the genius is actually over there, and we'll see her in a minute. And there was a recasting that was done. And this is accurate to with, within like the thickness of a human hair in terms of what the original genius looked like. The plan is to eventually take this beautiful lady and put her back on top of the building. Nathan Hale, 21 years old, hanged by the British for treason in Manhattan. Said before he died, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. Nathan Hale was a teacher, and he was spying at the request of George Washington on the British, and he wrote all of his notes in Latin. 
Well, a British soldier saw him stuffing these notes into his shoe, okay? and before the, uh, before the following day was over, Hale was put to his death. Okay? The British wasted no time. Uh, there was a, you know, a very quick decision that we did not need this guy running around sharing secrets about what the British were doing. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about the way the room is laid out. Uh, and Senator Kane mentioned upstairs that the Senate sits in numerical order because there's only 36 of them. Okay, if you look around this room, you'll see that there are desks that have the name of the, uh, the, the, it says rep for representative, the last name of the person, and the district that they sit in. My desk, I'll walk to, you guys can stay, I'll show you where that is. This is my desk. All of the desks are original, 1878, and they all still function. Um, they're beautiful, they're very functional. Um, you know, they added electricity, obviously, because we come in now with laptop computers and cell phones and everything else. Uh, the, um, as, as he mentioned, this is the largest room in the building, as, as I had mentioned to you when we started. And it is separated. The, the only distinction that we have is that the Republicans are on one side and the Democrats are on the other side. Okay, what goes on here? Well, it's a great question. So the Speaker of the House stands here. He is in control of all of the goings on in the room. And then you have clerks and assistant clerks that are processing all of the paperwork. A lot of paperwork flies, even though we live in this electronic world. Uh, every desk has a microphone. You can see that these microphones are, hey, they come out. The microphone is only turned on when you have been recognized to speak. Otherwise, could you imagine the noise? Uh, and as I mentioned before, it gets very noisy in here to begin with. Um, the, uh, when a vote is taken, these brown, very plain looking brown boxes up on the wall are actually digital uh, message boards. Uh, as the tour guide mentioned, all of our names are up there uh, when the board is on. They show up in white when we are not voting on an issue. Uh, when uh, we are called back to uh, vote on a bill, uh, they ring bells, they signal us to come back to the chamber if we're not in here, um, and we have an opportunity to vote. Every desk has a red and green button, green for yes, red for no. As soon as I press that button, my name changes the color, uh, red for no, green for yes. When the voting is done, the clerk will, uh, I'm sorry, the speaker will, will shut the machine off, shut the device off that records the votes, and then the clerk reads the uh, reads the total uh, of the vote. If the bill passes, you can see there's a gavel up on the speaker's desk. He or she will bang the gavel and, and say that uh, the bill or the amendment has passed. Just to thank you for coming up here today. It was really my pleasure to uh, take you around and have you learn a little bit more about the building with me as I continue to learn and to come into the house and see uh, when you're watching on uh, CTN, um, you know, maybe you'll see me when the camera swings if it's uh, one of those late, uh, late nights or whatnot. Um, here's what I'd like to leave you with, though, besides my appreciation for you coming up here. If you have an issue, please reach out to me. You know, if, you wanna, if, if there's issues that come up, if you want to you know, talk about things on the way home today, but please let me help you if I can. I'm happy to do that for you. It's part of the reason why I chose to serve in this capacity. Okay, and I'm happy to do that. If you ever want to come back, you have, uh, you have uh, someone who's in town that you think should see this building. If my schedule permits, I'm happy to do that. If you have grandchildren, great-grandkids you want to bring up here, bring them up. We can have them come up and get a tour and do the same thing. Spend a couple of hours going through, uh, going through the Capitol. And it does not have to be um, on, a, on a weekday. We can also come in. I can come in here. Um, uh, on a weekend as well to do that. If you're interested in knowing what I'm doing for you, there's a couple of things you can do. If you have an email address, you can sign up to get my email messages. If you don't have an email, you can just go on your computer. The, the site is really easy to remember. It's www.rep.berthel.com. -E and it'll bring you to a page that has all of the latest news that I put out, things that I'm working on, things that I'm concerned about. Occasionally we ask if you're so inclined to answer a few questions so I can kind of get a pulse on, on an issue that maybe uh, I'm not sure on and I want to know how you feel about that. But please reach out to me. Um, Catherine knows how to get in touch with my aide. You can call me directly. I live in town, obviously. Thank you very much for being here. My pleasure.